This is my version of The Virgin and Child by Elisabetta Sorani. I'm going to talk about the composition and the wonder of triangles, but first I want to mention something else about this image. One of the things I find particularly interesting about this image is how it captures the beginning and end of Christ's life. The figure of the baby Jesus holds a circle of flowers above his head. This is a subtle reference to the crucifixion of Christ because Christ is said to have died wearing a crown of thorns. It is a very clever and subtle reference. There are other ways Sarani could have created a piece of artwork that would talk about two different stories from the Bible. She could have created a composition that uses the horizontal line of the diamond guide and split the image into two sections. This is a technique that we explored in the C1 art composition course. She could have shown the birth of Christ in the bottom section and the crucifixion in the upper section. Instead, she has included a subtle reference that tells both stories. It's a very clever technique. It does rely on the viewer having an understanding of Christianity, but this painting is designed for a Christian audience. A dramatic composition can make religious themes seem more otherworldly, but this approach adds something different. There is subtlety in the image and that makes these themes more human and down to earth. You'll notice that the subject matter is mainly within the shape of a triangle. It isn't a perfect triangle, but it is very close to that shape. There are many paintings in art history which have a composition where the subject matter is within a triangle on the canvas. This is my version of the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. The original doesn't really need much of an introduction, but it is another example of an image with a triangular composition. It could be argued that these triangles occur naturally in portraiture. People are smaller at the top and larger at the waist, and when they sit down it just naturally creates a triangular shape. However, I don't really feel satisfied with that answer. Portraits can be done in a number of ways. This is my version of Napoleon by Jack Louis David. In this picture he is stood up. A portrait could just be an image of a person's face or they could be moved to create any number of shapes. There are many alternative poses that could be used. This is a painting that I created. It's inspired by a Rodin sculpture titled The Kiss. I became fascinated with the poses he was using and how he finds interesting angles for the viewers to look at the work. And he also creates interesting angles for the bodies. There are shapes within the composition. There are partial triangles that form as you walk around the sculpture. It depends what angle you view the sculpture at. In my painting, I couldn't help highlighting the triangle that can be seen from that angle. Rodin really is a master of how to pose the body. The body moves in ways where some poses are more beautiful than others and Rodin has an amazing understanding of what works and what doesn't. This is my version of The Thinker by Rodin and in one body he has found an interesting pose that depicts a moment of stillness and contemplation. There are shapes and angles and I found myself painting those triangles. I was drawn to the basic shapes that exist within the design of his three-dimensional works. 
Those triangles are possible within depictions of the figure. There does seem to be something special about the shape of a triangle. It can be used as the basic structure of a composition as we saw with my version of the Virgin and Child by Sorani, or it can be used to create interesting poses like we saw with my paintings of Rodin sculptures. We also saw in the Arnolfini portrait that triangles can be used to decide where subjects should be placed in an image.